Uh, my name is Steven Njoroge Solomon, and the Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. So I'm a son in this house, and I want to thank God for the opportunity that I have today that I can minister uh, his word, and also thank our parents, our bishop and mom for even this opportunity and the pastoral team. I do not take it for granted. So uh, thank you. Uh, I know that God is going to minister to us uh, in a very special way. So, Bwana uh, Are you expectant? Yeah, so my prayer is that you continue being expectant. Yes, you are reminded that we are in the season of restoration and demonstration. And uh, the word of God says that in uh, Isaiah 44 verse 26 in the NIV version that he carries out his words, uh, he, the, the words of his servants and fulfills the prediction of his messengers. That word is going to come to pass in our lives. Let's continue holding on. And today I want us to just discuss a, a, a topic which we can give a heading, expecting divine setups for our breakthroughs. Expecting divine setups for our breakthroughs. Other people would like to call setups blessings in disguise, but I'm comfortable when I, we call it divine setups. And friends, we need to know that opportunity, the, the opportunities that, that we have are more important than the ones that we wish we had had. I'll repeat that. The opportunities that we have are more important than the ones that we think we, we wish that we would have. We can trust God to weave together the events of life for our best, even though we may not be able to see the overall pattern. But we can be assured that God has the overall pattern. He knows the end game. The rewards for doing, uh, doing right are sometimes delayed but they are guaranteed by God himself. And as I begin, I would like to give a testimony. I remember some time back, I worked in, in, uh, in engineering, in finance, and in audit. And I remember my first uh, job in, uh, in finance, I did accounts, accounts payable, and then I was taken to treasury, treasury back office. And I remember in, uh, in both areas, I, 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 I did a sh sh shine and I was given a lot of awards awards and even people are complaining they are asking knew you too was award because I could be voted by the top management and everyone else in management because all of us were in management and I remember a time came I had just been promoted uh, in the month of September and I thought that maybe now another promotion I have to, stay, to sit now uh, to wait for uh, some years but because of the good work that I had done in the two areas an opportunity came for a project to, to be able to change uh, an ERP system and uh, whereby we are to do it for nine Central Africa countries. So in, uh, in four blocks, East and Southern Africa, for, for six countries, uh, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and, um, uh, and Nigeria, each had to have someone in a certain area. So they needed a process expert for accounts payable and treasury. And I remember uh, my, uh, my, uh, what happened is that I was called by the financial controller and he told me there is this opportunity which is in this place uh, and I know that uh, you are capable of handling it. I know it is very stretching, but I have confidence in you. I know you are going to do it. And uh, I told him, uh, I'll go with an open mind, and I know that God is going to see me through, and, uh, and I'm going to, uh, to make it. And then he told me, Mi Mr. Jipigi Debe, ata ni director, ndiyo ya proposal kao na wewe, unge handle with easy area mbiri. Lakini mkubwa wako, ndiyo ya likuwa enda. Lakini ulejua mkubwa wako, ni mtu wa kuhepa hepa, na ni mtu wa chukui kazi seriously. So, uh, instead of my boss being given that job, uh, I'm the one who was given. And me, when I was picking that job, because I had just been promoted, but when I, uh, when I joined that job, I was given another promotion. I expect. I went with an open mind, but my boss, the inefficiency of my boss and the wrong attitude was my divine setups, set up for my, uh, for my breakthrough. So, and uh, I'd like uh, to, to say what, uh, what is a setup. Setup has two definitions. The first one, setup is, uh, is the way in which something, especially an organization or equipment, is organized, planned or arranged, that is made, uh, being made ready to be used to effective free function. Ata ukinunua simi yako ina kujanga na box, au TV ndio unai set up so that it's able to function properly. Iyo ni setup moja. Lakini pakona setup wengine, a setup is a scheme or a trick intended to incriminate or deceive someone. Uh, and you can hear someone say, recent, he didn't, uh, he di he didn't die, it was a setup. Hmm? So, ile kitu unaona, it's not the actual thing. Na ndiposa unasikia wengine wanasema, it's blessing in disguise, but I would like to call it 
uh, divine setup. But the two form of divine setups, for any form of, uh, of setup, there is anticipated, expected, or predetermined outcome. So setup ikiwekwa kama ni ile ya kukuweka kwa mteko au nyingine ule ameweka hiyo setup anajua pahali utatokezea The divine setups that we are trusting God for and we will continue trusting God is to have a positive income a, a positive outcome that at the end of it it will be a positive outcome We have good expectations that things will turn in our favor for God uh, uh, for God has got pr- good plans for us He fuels our future with hope and that's what we are reminded by Bishop on Sunday during the ICC. So uh, the, the main scripture that you'll be reading today is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3, and then verse 15 to 18. And uh, uh, this one focuses that Saul was turned from Adon Kesika to the king of Israel. In verse, uh, in verse 3, the word of God says, Now the donkeys of Kish... Uh, Saul's father were lost, and Kish said to his son Saul, Please take one of the servants with you, and arise, go, and look for the donkeys. Uh, let's go to verse 15. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his, ear, in, in, in his ear the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time, I'll send you a man from the land of Benjamin. And you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of Philistines, for I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me. So when Samuel saw uh, Saul, the Lord said to to him, so it's the Lord who spoke to, uh, 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 to, uh, to Samuel, there is the man of whom I spoke to you. This one shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Please tell me, where is the seer's house? You'll be able to see later. But you can see, for, for Saul, it is the donkeys which, ha, uh, which had been lost. But you can see, God is the one who was speaking now to Samuel and telling him, Yesterday, this is the person I'm to- I told you, I'm going to send you. So you can see it was a setup, and we are going to see what eventually happened. God has predetermined or, or uh, God had predetermined or ordained it. Because you can see God had already told, uh, told, told Samuel concerning Saul coming. And in fact later you'll be able to see that even the, at the high table a, a seat had been set, uh, set ready for him and even a special meat that Saul was to take. But f- according to Saul, him and the servant they were seeking the donkeys. Our God declares the end from the beginning. And that's the word of, what the word of God declares in Isaiah 46 verse 10. That I make known the ends from the beginning. From the ancient times, what is still to come, I say. My purpose will stand and I'll do that which I please. God is able to turn our frustrations into divine setups for our, divine, uh, for, uh, for our breakthroughs. And we see disciples in Luke, Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 6. They were fishing the whole night. But they did not get anything. They were so frustrated. And we know that they were, uh, we, uh, we, we, we see that they were professional fishermen. And in fact, they were washing their nets. But after Jesus used the boat, he told them, launch unto the deep. And in verse 5, that's why we see uh, in verse 5 of that, it says, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will read down the net and we know what happened they were able to get a lot of fish that they were unable uh, the, 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 they even had to seek for assistance so yes that is what was frustrating them even today when you came to the house of god i don't know what has been frustrating you this year or what has what is has been frustrating you this past, past week but god is able to uh, to change uh, to, uh, to change your frustration and make it a divine setup for his divine uh, uh, for, for his breakthrough for for your breakthrough and uh, because he's a good God. So you should never give up. Because God is able to turn your frustration into divine, break, uh, a divine setup for your breakthrough. Bwana atukuzwe. We should not be tempted to believe that our troubles or our challenges direct the story of our lives. But we should always remember God dominates the story of our lives. God is the one who dominates 
the story of our lives, not what we are going through. And I remember one, one time Reverend Millicent was saying that we have to stop and, uh, and, uh, and quit talking about the enemy as if he owns the show. Hmm? And she said that we must know that the enemy's agenda is to offer sideshows. Hmm? The owner of the show is our Lord Jesus Christ. Buona tukuzwe. That Jesus Christ is the, one, is the owner of the show. So we should avoid the sideshows that the devil is trying to bring on our way. We may have the picture of our situation or even the bigger picture. But I thank God for he has the whole picture of ourselves, of our situations, and even of the outcomes. That is our God. Because he knows the end from, uh, he declares the end from the beginning. And I would like just to cite a few examples of setups. Uh, this is just mentioning, that is not the main, uh, the, 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 the main thing, but just mentioning, just examples of setup. The first uh, uh, setup is the crashing of Satan at the cross. Uh, um, that is cr crashing of Satan at the cross. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, we see how the wisdom, uh, uh, the, the, the wisdom of God is in mystery. And in verse 8 it says, uh, uh, which, that is God's wisdom revealed by the Spirit, none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So, but remember, in Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 15, uh, remember uh, what God, God told the, uh, the serpent. It's like he was telling uh, the, servant, uh, the serpent, and we know that the serpent is the devil, we shall revisit. So, if you are revisiting Syria, Elias, and Uhuru, is that you are told, uh, we shall revisit. And the word of God says that, I'll put an enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his, his heel. Notice that at, at first it looks like the, the warfare will be between two offspring, between your offspring and her offspring. But in the next words, something different is said. He shall bruise your head. And uh, 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 who is this? Is the woman's offspring. Uh, and who is your? Uh, that, uh, that is, shall uh, bruise the head of the serpent, and that is, uh, uh, th th that is the Satan. That decisive bro was struck by the perfect offspring of the woman, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross. This is one of the reasons why the eternal son of God had to become a man, because it was the offspring of a woman who would crush the serpent. So at the cross, the devil thought that now uh, Jesus was done, but he did not know that it was a setup. It was a setup. And that's where it was a, a, his defeat, and that's where we received our victory. Buona Tukuzwe. So the second uh, example of a, of a divine setup was on the issue of uh, Moridekai, uh, how he was honored. And we know that the king, that is in Esther chapter 6, you look at on your own time, uh, uh, the, 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 that night the, the king could not sleep. So he ordered the books of the Chronicles, the record of his reign to be brought and read to him. And that's where he, he, he knew that uh, Moridekai uh, had exposed a scheme to, escape, uh, to execute the king. And that you can be able to see it in uh, Esther chapter 2, verse 9 and 13. So the king did not sleep, but it was a setup so, uh, for, for, uh, for Moridokai to be honored and elevated. Another example is concerning Esther. And Esther, we know that she was a Jewish exile and an orphan, and how she was made a king. And we know that King Vashiti's uh, stubbornness was a divine setup for, her, for her, her breakthrough. So she became from a slave girl to a queen. So kukana watu watanyeta, kama vile, uh, kama vile queen harinyeta, ndiyo wewe uweza kukumbukwa. And like my case, uh, what, what I told you, is because of my, the efficiency of my boss and, uh, 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 and, and his uh, uh, bad altitude, that's what, uh, what led others to see me. Because he was already in that grade, but they, so, uh, it's better they promote me to take that opportunity. The other one is Joseph's divine connection with uh, uh, ki, uh, King's Cup bearer in prison. So uh, that was a divine, uh, it was a divine connection. And at the end, uh, because of that divine uh, situation, he was able to be recognized by the king. And the other one is David, the shepherd boy, king of Goriath. He just obeyed his father. Without, though he had been anointed, he just obeyed his father. And when he obeyed, we are able to see that, uh, what became of him. And, uh, he stayed in the Paris, he had favor with Israel and Judah, and be, he became king's son in law. And the final one, Example is uh, what we are reminded by Pastor Harris, and that is Ruth, Ruth's resolve to stick with Naomi. 
uh, had that was her divine setup to be uh, to be married by Boaz and end up uh, being in the lineage of Jesus Christ because the son Obed now became the father of Jesse and Jesse was the father of David. Those are just examples of divine uh, 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 divine setups. So as uh, I told you that our topic is divine setups for our breakthrough, expecting divine setups for our breakthrough. So our main setup which we are discussing today is that of Saul being chosen, moving from a donkey seeker to a king. So, and, uh, our, so that is our main text and that's where we, we are going to dwell. That is from first, uh, first Samuel chapter 9 and uh, we are going to, we saw that verse 15. Let's go back to verse 15. Verse 3, let's move from verse 3 and then we move to go to verse 15. First Samuel chapter 9. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost, and Kish said to his son, Please take one of the servants with you, you and uh, arise, go and look for the donkeys. Verse 15. Verse 15, 15. 15, Kuminatano. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear. The, uh, the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I'll send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander of my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of Philistines, for have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me. So this is the main uh, divine setup that we are talking about, that him, he knew that he's seeking donkeys, but you can see God already had predestined, had ordained it, so that now he can be made a king. And uh, there are several, five things that you can be able to pick uh, uh, what, happened from, uh, uh, what happened to Saul and what we can expect to happen in our lives when we encounter divine setups for our breakthrough. So there are five things that I would like to share. And the first one is that we shall hear good news. We shall hear good news or receive our breakthrough. And that's based on uh, verse 20. So media will uh, we'll move together. Uh, verse 20. Yeah, the word of God says that, but, let's all read. But as for your donkeys that were lost three days ago, do not be anxious about them. For they have been found, and on whom is, is all the desire of Israel, is it not on you and all your father's house? So, here we, we see that the good news was that the donkeys had been found. So, I don't know what is the good news to you. Yes, we say that God is able to turn our frustrations into divine setups for our, uh, for our breakthrough. So, that can happen to you. God will bring that which is frustrating you to an end in Jesus' name. For Saul, it was the lost donkeys. Good news that was that donkeys were, had been found. So, even you, may you hear good news in the name of Jesus, because God is in the business of uh, preparing divine setups for our breakthrough. Buona to Kuzwe. So, the, uh, number two, we are talking about divine restoration will be our portion. Divine restoration will be our, uh, our portion. We have the, this year we have the word of God. Uh, that is the year of restoration and demonstration. And our God is forever faithful and dependable. So we can count on his word. Because he's the one who says that he's going to restore. Buona to Kuzwe. I would like to read First Samuel chapter 10 verse 2. Uh, the word of God says that where, uh, uh, this is after Saul had been anointed. Uh, as king uh, had been anointed by Samuel, then we see that when you have departed from me today you will find two men by Rachel's uh, tomb in the territory of the Benjam uh, uh, Benjamin uh, that is Zilza and they shall say to you the donkeys which you went, uh, you went to look for have been found and now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you saying what shall I do about my son so hold it there we see uh, it was very direct, but that you'll find two men by Rachel's tomb. We know that Rachel was the, father to, uh, was the mother to Joseph. And when, when uh, Rachel was giving her second-born son, uh, who became Benjamin, she, uh, she died on the way. Uh, she died on the way. So, and we know that in the tomb. So it's not the best place to be. Especially for loved ones. It evokes very negative memories. Mm? But... Here we see that he's been told about good things that he's going to find there. That he was be, that there, there uh, he'll meet two people and they, they will say to you, 
the donkeys which you, ha you went to look for have been found. And now your father is, has, has, not, has ceased caring about the donkeys and is caring about you. So he had the good news. So that was, that was a restoration uh, uh, to him. Instead of crying, Saul received good news. God is able to bring a turnaround in our life to the honor and to the praise of his holy name. God is able to uh, give us the power to be different from others, from our family members, our friends, our peers, and even our neighbors. And I remember this year, Pastor Brian, as he was leading us into a time of praise and worship when we are closing over, he remember, I remember him uh, causing us to, read, to sing this song, Jipe Jina, Natukwa na Jipe Nasema, Naitwa Mbarikiwa. So, ata hapo tunaona, yeye badara ya kusikia ujumbe ambaye haikuwa sawa, alisikia ujumbe mzuri. Uh, so even for us, when restoration comes into our lives, we are going to hear good news in the name of Jesus. That will be restoration for us in the name of Jesus because God is able to bring a turn around to the honor and to the praise of his holy name. The third point is that we shall be honored and favored. We shall be honored and favored. And I would like us to read 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. The word of God says that, Then you shall go on forward from there, and come to the uh, terbinth, uh, uh, terbinth tree, tree of Tabor. There, three men going up to, uh, to God at Bethel will meet you. One carrying three young goats, another carrying, uh, carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their, hand, uh, from their hands. So we see here, the first thing is that Saul was great, greeted and given two loaves. We know that if somebody greets you, it means that that person is honoring you. Kwa sababu mtu ambaye akuheshimu anakupita tu. That person is honoring you. So he was, on, he was greeted and he was given those, uh, uh, the, 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 those two loaves. So that's why I, I can declare upon our lives that uh, we shall be honored in the name of Jesus. In this season of restoration and demonstration, we shall be honored to the honor and to the praise of his holy name. Saul was given two loaves out of the three loaves. He was given two loaves out of three loaves. Let's see that uh, number four. Verse four, sorry, verse four. Y yes, uh, they were carrying three loaves, but he was given two of them. So, uh, yeah, and they will greet you and give you two loaves of that bread which you shall receive. Verse 3 is one which was talking about the three loaves. So it doesn't make sense for three men with three loaves to give one man two loaves. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. But, so that must have been favor. Mm? So it didn't make any sense. Favor means being accepted or preferred by others. Mary was greeted by the angel as highly favored in Luke chapter 1 verse 28. He was greeted by the angel as highly favored. So even for us, favor will be our portion. When you are favored, you have flavor or you have taste. Favor is unfair. And I remember Bishop some time back preaching a message that favor is unfair. And I remember during that time, I was passing through, uh, there are some people who had hurt me. And I was feeling, uh, I, I, was a bit, I had bitterness in my, in my heart. But I remember if no one else was ministered that day, when Bishop ministered that sermon that favor is unfair, myself, I went rejoicing. And from that day, I received my hearing because, I, uh, uh, because of what Bishop preached. So favor is unfair. It doesn't make sense sometimes. It doesn't make sense. Like it cannot make sense that three people with three robes, they give one person uh, uh, two robes. <clears throat> Saul even protested of being from the smallest tribe of Israel, from the Rish clan, that is Matri's clan, a prophet declared great things upon his life. And that's what we read uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse, uh, up to 21, and said, And to whom is all the desire of Israel turned, if not to you and your, your family reign? Saul answered, But am I not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel? And is not my crown the least of the crowns of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? He was protesting because it didn't make sense. And also Gideon, we know Gideon in uh, Judges chapter 6 verse 15 and 16, uh, he, he was saying that, pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, how can I save Israel? My crown is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. The Lord answered, 
I'll be with you and I will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none arrive. So even for the two, uh, for, for the two men, it didn't make sense. Just like even as uh, God prepared divine setups for your breakthrough, it may not make sense, but God is able to bring a turn around in your life. God is able to, uh, to change that which is frustrating you. Like we saw that the, the, fisher, the, uh, the disciples, Peter and the other disciples, they were uh, struggling the entire night, night without getting anything. But their frustration was turned to joy. Because the same, same place they were, the same boat and the same she, sea they, uh, they were, that's what was God used that they, are, they were able to have their breakthrough. Bwana atukuzwe. Number four, we shall go to a, a high, to a high praise. Our high praise. Our high praise. And when we talk about our high praise, when we receive restoration, we shall be uplifted, we shall be upgraded, uh, upgraded we shall be promoted or elevated to the next level. Uh, in verse 19 of uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 9, verse 19, uh, the word of God says, Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer, and that is a prophet. Go up before me to the high priest, for you shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let you go and will tell you all that is in your heart. Let's see also 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 13, especially in the Amplified Version. If possible in the Amplified. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 13 in the Amplified Version. When Saul had finished uh, prophesying, uh, he, he went to the high praise, that is, of worship, the high praise of worship. Yeah, that, 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 so Rama, uh, because the high praise was called Rama, Rama means high or height. It's a praise of elevation, it's a praise of worship. This is a praise of great promotion or divine connection. And for us, as we receive divine setups for our, divine, uh, for, for our breakthrough, uh, we shall go where we could not have gone before. We'll do that which you could not have done before because remits will be broken in the name of Jesus. That will be our portion, that remits will be broken in the name of Jesus. In, in 2020, the season of restoration and, and demonstration, God is upgrading, God is uplifting, God is elevating us into the next level in the name of Jesus. So that is our portion, even as we continue trusting on God. And number five, we shall receive transformation. We shall receive transformation. Uh, and we are going to read 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. Then uh, this is what uh, Samuel told uh, Samuel, uh, uh, Saul. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and be turned to another person, uh, to, to, another, to another man. So, after he was anointed, uh, great things were declared upon his life. And uh, it's good you take time to read from uh, chapter 10, from verse 1, up to about uh, uh, verse 16 there. You'll be able to see the whole story. So, for us, remember, it's the year of restoration and demonstration. So, my desire for you and me is that there shall be demonstration. Because we see for Saul, he started prophesying. So, and when you talk about transformation... We are talking about noticeable change. We are talking about demonstration. When God intervenes, protocols are bypassed. That's when God intervenes. That protocols uh, are bypassed. And processes accelerated to the glory of his, of his name. God can cause you to skip some levels. Uh, even as I told you about uh, how that promotion came about that I was able to skip, uh, a, a, a lot of people who are waiting, I was able to bypass them because God was on my, uh, on my side. And maybe you are saying, yes, yes, we are told that this is the year of, uh, uh, of restoration and demonstration. But today is the last Sunday of November. So what is going to happen? So every year when we come to the end of the year or the beginning of the year, there is a scripture that has always been a great blessing to me. And that is in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 in the NIV version. And the word of God says, but do not forget. You and me, we know that we, most, most of the times that we forget. But here the word of God is commanding us, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. That, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. 
and a thousand years are like, uh, are like a day. Yeah, so that's what the scripture is reminding us. So it doesn't matter that you are waiting period. God is able to prepare divine setups for your divine elevation. Who could have thought that Ruth, as, we, uh, as Pastor Aris reminded us, coming from uh, a, 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 a tribe whereby it was a product of incest, came up now to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. It doesn't make sense. But our God, uh, his grace is always sufficient and amazing. There is nothing that is impossible with our God. And in Psalms that 1 verse 19, Psalms that 1 verse 19, uh, this is what uh, the psalmist says that how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who, who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all. Si kule kando, si kule kando, in the, in the sight of all, those who take refuge in you. Let's uh, go, go, go through it again. That how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all, on those, uh, those that uh, take refuge in you. I don't know if you have made uh, Jesus your refuge. I don't know where you run to when you are passing through hard times. But we are told that if we make him our refuge, if we continue to walk in the fear of the Lord, that great abundant things will be bestowed on us, but in the sight of all, because we make him our refuge. May you make him your refuge. And if you have not known him as Lord and Savior, it begins from there. And I usually like telling people, yes, we are associated with God because he created us, but there is a difference when you receive him and you become a, a, a child in the kingdom. Because the word of God says that to them that believed, to them that received him, he gave them power to be called children of God. So that is the starting point. And we know that David, even as we were saying this, when you begin from Psalm that one, it's a, it was a very trying moment. Uh, because uh, that was a time that a lot of people had, uh, uh, his enemies had raised against him, his neighbors and friends had, uh, had also raised against him. But he reached in verse 15 and he says, my times are in the hands of the Lord. I don't know, even this time, during time of crisis, I don't know where your times are. But it's good we know that our times should be in the hands of the Lord. Because wisdom and power belongs to him. He changes times and season. That is our God. There is nothing that is impossible to him, uh, with him. So I'll repeat that, th th those four points uh, just mentioning. Uh, when we receive divine, um, uh, uh, divine setups for our breakthrough, the first thing is that we shall hear good news or we shall receive our breakthrough. For, uh, for, for Saul, it was that the dawn case had been found. Then the second one, we shall receive divine, uh, the divine restoration will be our portion. And we saw that at the tomb of uh, the grandmother, because um, uh, Saul was a Benjamite, instead of, 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 of Saul having the negative feelings, though are good news, he had reason to celebrate. That we shall be honored and favored. And the fourth, we shall go to a high praise. And we say that a high praise is that we, shall, we will be uplifted. We will be upgraded, promoted, or elevated to the next stage. That God is going to cause us to go where we could not have gone. Do that which, which we, could not, uh, uh, we could not have done. Mpaka sa zingino na jiuriza kweli ni mimi. Na ndipo sata tunayimbanga hilo wimbo, wanishangaza. Wanishangaza. Mungu bado anaendrea kutushangaza. So, because he's the one who said that he's going to, uh, to bring restoration. Uh, desire that God is going to cause you to marvel at his doing uh, in your life. And the fifth one, we shall receive transformation. And we have said when we talk about transformation, we are talking about noticeable change. And we, are, we said that when God intervenes, protocols are bypassed, processes are ex accelerated uh, to the glory of his name, and some revels are even skipped. That is what God is able to do. May he give you uh, uh, the anointing for acceleration, just as it happened with Erija. At Mount Carmel, uh, when he tucked his cloak, he was able to run uh, more than uh, uh, Ahab and his, um, and his chariot. So that's what God is able to, to do. And as a kutoa kule nyuma, akuleta kule mbere, kwa sababi ya utukufu wake. Let's remember that God shares glory with no man. When God does bring restoration, when God brings those setups, but as we began, we said 
the opportunities we have are more important than the ones we wish we had. Maybe it's just a calling for you to just to be obedient. Maybe it's just a, a reason for you to make a, that resolve like Ruth did, uh, did make that resolve. Maybe it's just uh, doing a good act like uh, what Mordecai did. So uh, those are opportunities that God brings on your way so that, you may, uh, so that later God is going to use those ones as a setup for, your, uh, for a breakthrough. We can trust God to weave together the events of life for our best, even though we may not be able to see the overall pattern. But let's remember that he declares the end from the beginning. The rewards for doing right are sometimes delayed, but they are granted by God himself. As I conclude, God is in the business of preparing divine setups for a breakthrough. My question is, are you expectant? We need to be expectant, knowing that God, his thoughts and, uh, and ways are ha more higher than ours. God is able to turn our frustrations into divine setups for a breakthrough. It doesn't matter what is frustrating you. There is nothing that is uh, difficult for our God. And I remember in 2 Chronicles chapter uh, 32, verse 7 and 8, 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 7 and 8, this one was when the Israelites, uh, they, they, they had been, um, the, the Assyrian king and the army, the army was so vast. But uh, later we see uh, the word of God says that, be strong and courageous. So uh, King uh, Hezekiah was encouraging them. That be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the first army with him. For there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And, and the word of God says, and the people gained confidence. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said. So even us, as we, venture, uh, uh, we, we step out this week, as we continue expecting God to bring a divine setups for a divine elevation, let's remember that greater is the power with us, for the Lord is with us to help us and to fight our battles. Buona Tukuzwe. Uh, we need to remember that for any form of setup, uh, whether it's to effective function or a scheme, there is anticipated or expected or predetermined outcome. But we are trusting God to make those uh, divine setups to be our breakthrough. We saw the obedience of Saul when he was just told by his father Kish, or even David to go by his father uh, Jesse to go and look at his brothers. As, uh, 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 obedience being one of the great ways for our divine setups. Today we can obey the word of God by saying yes to Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. So before I continue, I don't know where you are or you are in this uh, sanctuary today and you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Today can be a defining moment for you. So I'm giving you that opportunity and you can only raise your hand and you can pray together. And Jesus is going to come into your life and is going to transform you because he's a good God. So are you there? So, but it's good that you make that decision. It's a personal decision. So you may be even couples in the, uh, here, but it's for you as an individual to make that decision. So, and uh, for us who are here, uh, if you are there and you are believing God that God is going to bring uh, divine set, uh, God, uh, that you're expecting divine setups for, a break, for your breakthrough, maybe you can stand up and we make the final prayer. If that is your desire that you are believing God that is going to prepare divine setups for your breakthrough. So let's breathe together. Our Father and our God in the name of Jesus. Thank you Jehovah God for the way Lord you have spoken to us Lord through your word. And Heavenly Father, Lord, you have reminded us, King of glory, Lord of divine setups, Lord, that you, uh, you, 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 Lord, you execute King of glory for our, our breakthroughs, Jehovah God. And Heavenly Father, Lord, we are expectant King of glory because Heavenly Father, we know that, Lord, you are not limited, Lord, in any way. Lord, your heart declares that great Lord is you, our Lord, exalted in power. Your understanding, Lord, has no limit. Heavenly Father, Lord, we look unto you, Jehovah God. And Lord, we stand by your word that came forth to us at the beginning of this year. Is that you shall restore all the years, not some of the years, all the years. And Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that you are faithful. 
Lord, uh, your, your, your faithful Lord and dependable King of glory. Lord, when we look back, Lord, we can count, Lord, on your love. We can count on your faithfulness. We can count on your greatness, King of glory, and even your goodness, even upon our lives. And Heavenly Father, Lord, you are declared that, Lord, we shall eat in plenty and we shall be satisfied. Thank you because, Lord, you are ushering us, Lord, into a season of abundance, Lord. You, Lord, you are also continue to remind us that shame will be far away from our camp. And Lord, we have continued to believe that is our portion. That as divine setups come, shame, Lord, will be far away from our camp in the name of Jesus. And that we will know, and others will know, that God is in our midst. Lord, may it be so king of glory. Lord, as you make those, as you prepare those divine setups for a breakthrough, Lord, we will know, and others, Lord, we will know that, Lord, you are in our midst. Lord, as we begin a new king of glory, continue to go before us. Continue to be our rear guard. Continue to be our help and fight all our battles. Because, Lord, you are the Lord strong and mighty. You are the Lord mighty in, the, in battle. You are the Lord of hosts. We give you all honor. We give you all glory. We give you all exhortation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord.